All right, everyone, this is Ross, and we're here for another end of the summer harvest tour. And we had picked plenty of things already. We picked uh, lots of tomatoes that we'll be bringing inside and eating at our leisure. We also picked plenty of uh, strawberries. And these strawberries are Mara de Bois. That's the name of the variety. It's a French variety. Really, really tasty strawberry. Has a Concord grape flavor that uh, I really, really like. Um, it's really interesting. Let me try one for you. It's great. It has a lot of Alpine flavor to it. A wild strawberry flavor almost. So you can see my tomatoes are pretty much picked through for the most part. Uh, we still have maybe a few cherry tomatoes here. We've been getting lots of rain, guys, so I'm trying to pick a lot of things now a little early because I don't want my tomatoes to, to split or crack. Um, same thing with the, the strawberries. They get ruined by a lot of rain. We're probably going to get tomorrow some at least over an inch of rain. So it's going to be a lot for one day. And uh, we still have plenty of beefsteak tomatoes inside, somewhere in the neighborhood of like five or six. This guy here is green zebra that I just picked. It's a really, really tasty tomato. Uh, we also have over here my peppers, and we've been eating peppers like crazy. So I'm gonna take my pruning shears. We're gonna cut some of these peppers off. And we're gonna put them in the bowl. It's a shame I don't have a second hand <laughs> because these guys are just falling right to the ground. But there's a lot of chocolate peppers. So this, this brown one here is a chocolate pepper that does quite well. I'm finding, but the Carmen pepper here that you see is extremely sweet, unrivaled in flavor it seems like. Jimmy Nardello also seems to do really well in terms of flavor. So we'll pick a couple Jimmy Nardellos I think as well, but uh, I'm really impressed with the chocolate variety in terms of production. It doesn't seem that bad, but look, here's a hole. So that hole was really not good. Uh, it seems like the chocolate peppers get these little soft spots on them and they they don't seem to do well. I don't know. They put out peppers, but they don't, in their final days of ripening, they don't seem to do really all that great. We also have some Jimmy Nardellos here, some sunburst or flavor burst peppers. I can't remember what the name is exactly, but we'll harvest one of the Jimmy Nardellos. We've been saving seed, guys, for these peppers. It really isn't that difficult of a process. I don't know uh, why you would ever buy pepper seeds. But it's been a nice, uh, nice time with these peppers this year. We have corn here that's growing. I seeded this quite late. And we actually had a zucchini plant that was overcrowding this whole area right in there. I came out this morning, the rain and the weight of these zucchini plants is huge. So it knocked, it literally knocked off uh, the stake that I had around it and fell right onto those corn plants there. And that's really not good because these corn, this is the male flowers up here and this stuff needs to be wind pollinated down the corn, down the stalks to then pollinate the, uh, the ears. You can see these little tassels down here. So we'll get a late crop of corn, which is quite nice. Uh, but I really didn't want this stuff to be shaped the way it is. So we're going to have to plop it back up again, I think. Make sure it's not falling all over the place anymore. But at least we have some zucchini here that even though the plant you know, is behaving poorly, we can at least harvest some of this stuff. And this, these two haven't been pollinated, which really stinks. You get this with the zucchini. Um, some of them, for whatever reason, just do not get pollinated. You can see one right here that hasn't been pollinated. Cut this out. And it just doesn't, you know, doesn't do well. It actually starts to rot in the plant. And that's what that is. Whereas this one here has been pollinated and grew to a huge size in no time. So, zucchini is a tricky one. But I've been finding that every year I get zucchini no matter what. 
Um, and I've gotten plenty out of this plant, plenty out of another plant that I had that I've already taken out. And this is pretty interesting because you can eat the flower with it. So this is a nice size for zucchini. Um, I've, I know that zucchini has many uses to it. Um, you can even eat the stalks. And uh, I wouldn't recommend it if you don't know what you're doing, but you can eat the stalk of the zucchini plant. I know my girlfriend wants me to, uh, <laughs> she wants me to save it for her. So maybe I will. But what else do we have over here? Because there's not a whole lot going on on this side of the yard, but I do know that there's some mizuna. Oh man, it just got fried. I've been waiting to harvest this stuff, being very careful. Oh man, I was waiting to eat all of my other lettuce before I harvested this stuff, but it seems like there's um, some white fly that's getting to a lot of my brassicas. And because of that, it's really affecting some of these brassica plants. Um, it seems like the Swiss chard is unaffected for the most part, but my kales were getting hit. Um, a lot of my Japanese, uh, you know, lettuces or broccolis were getting hit. All of my uh, brassicas in the other bed over there I just showed you guys was getting destroyed. Uh, we do have some watermelon here, but I'm waiting for this guy to real easily come off the plant. You can see that the the tendril here is pretty much all, made, all, all the way died back, but we still have a little bit more time with this one. We also have a second one there. So we're not going to touch those yet because harvesting a melon too soon, I've learned this year, is a bad thing. <laughs> they don't get any flavor. They may have the color, but no flavor to speak of. So I think what we have left, for the most part, we can bring this over with us. Um, we have lots of raspberries to harvest, guys. We may want to do some eggplant, depending on how big they are at this point. But I'll take this other container here with me for the raspberries. And uh, so far, this bed over here has been a giant disappointment in terms of productivity. Uh, the bed really is just not that fertile, and it didn't get enough water. A lot of the, uh, the roots from this tree here have gotten into this bed and really just messed with the whole thing. It's been a really upsetting um, thing that's been happening but you can see my eggplants are finally getting some size to them really only the first ones of the year I harvested one that was quite small but it was very enjoyable so we'll bring these guys over and we just have to finish a little bit more tomatoes and I think some raspberries and that's it that's all we got but you know what um, there's a whole lot of raspberries on this tree guys or on these plants, I should say. These things come out in crazy, crazy abundances. I've talked about these so many times. These and strawberries, for me, are the most reliable thing, most constant thing. I almost always have raspberries and strawberries at almost any point in the year. There's a bit of a break, but uh, for the most part, I have them all the time. And they're very, very good. We also have some melons here that didn't do too well, guys. They got some Fusarium wilt. And we have another one on the other side. Let me show you guys. This melon over here is starting to get some color, I think. Starting to turn yellow a little bit. A little shake. Doesn't come off that easy, but the, the tendril is pretty much all the way dyed back. All the way brown, shriveled up. I just want to wet, let this one get a little 